thank our sponsor, Parati's Quality Meats, located in Cranford, New Jersey, serving customers all over New Jersey for the past 50 years. Welcome, everyone, to another edition of Coach's Talk provided by the Shore Football Report. You know who I am. I'm Coach Rob Davis. And today we have a special guest uh, of a head coach of Monmouth County, the Colts Neck head football coach, Matt Ahern. Coach, thank you for coming on the show today. Thanks for having me, Coach. That's great. I love getting different guys from the short conference that I'm very proud of um, on our show. And and you are a hot topic in the short conference, um, up and coming program. You got it going, Coach. I can't wait to talk about Colts Neck Cougars football today. Let me introduce you first to everybody, and then I'll let you take the floor. Uh, Coach Matt O'Hearn, this is your fourth year at Colts Neck. You took the program. You, be, you first pro first year. You were three and seven, and then you really got it going. You were eight and two, seven and one in the COVID season. And I know you got a lot of guys back that that you're real excited about. And Colts Neck is going to be a, a team to be reckoned with in the short conference. You were there for this is your fourth year. Prior to that, you were at Red Bank Catholic for 17 loyal years. That's amazing. 17. During that, you were a D coordinator for two years. You were an offensive coordinator for seven years. You had different head coaches at Red Bank Catholic, and you stayed on the same staff. That says a lot about you and your loyalty to your one program. And hopefully Colts Neck understands that you're going to be there for the long run, too, with that that being done said. In that tenure at Red Bank Catholic, you won a state championship, Protheo 3 state championship in 2014. I mean, that must have been some experience winning the state championship at RBC. It, it was. It was a great experience going up to MetLife and, you know, going on the field and, you know, winning the championship. That's, you know, the goal that everybody sets out for in the beginning of the year. So and you it was know, great to achieve it, that. It's tough with the with the parochial threes, with the North Jersey powers right there. And on, on the way, you also won many, many division championships at Red right. Bank Catholic. So you've been there, done it. I'm very impressed when I when I did some research on you, on your resume, the loyalty of how long you were – at that one school for 17 years. That says a lot. And being a head football coach, when you have an assistant coach through through all those times and transition of other coaches, just says a lot about you a, a, as a person and all that stuff. Coach, now here's the, the part that I love talking about is the process. And this is where you're going to take the floor and tell everybody, how did you become the head football coach where people know who you are right now? Take us through the steps when you first started football, there was somebody that pushed you in the game of football and go through your resume for us and talk a little bit about each stop on a way and then how you want everybody over taking that job at Colts Neck. Go ahead. All right. So, so I, I actually uh, I went to Red Bank Catholic High School as a, uh, a high school student, played there under Coach Montanero. Um, then uh, when I graduated college, I, I started coaching at RBC. Actually, my brother was a, a student there and asked Coach Edgerly if there was an opening on the staff. And uh, he said, yeah, come on in. We'll, we'll interview you. We'll talk to you and see. So I was hired as the uh, assistant freshman coach in 2001. Uh, it was the same year of September 11th, our first week. We were playing Manusquan, and, you know, everything got pushed back and everything got changed. Right. You know, so that was my introduction to, to coaching, sure. you know, that year. Uh, then the next year I was the head freshman coach uh, in 2002. And then uh, uh, after that I was – Brought up to varsity, positional coach as an offensive lineman, defensive line coach. Uh, and then I, I held that position for a couple of years. And then, you know, along with that, I became the special teams coordinator for a couple of years. Uh, and then after that, I became the offense coordinator at RBC uh, for seven years. Again, we won that state championship in 2014. Um, and then uh, Coach Edgerly came back after Coach Portella had, had resigned. Mm -hmm. uh, Coach, uh, Coach Edgerly came back and uh, he ran the offense, so I took over the defense for a couple of years. Then uh, after that, Colts Neck had an opening and, you know, I applied. And, you know, the biggest thing that we talked about was continuity. You know, being here for a long time, I was at RBC for 17 years. And, you know, I loved every, loved every minute of it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, great bunch of people over there. Uh, coach Lang's a great coach and good friend of mine uh, as we moved on. And, and, uh, you know, talking to the, the administration at Colts Neck, it was about continuity. It was, you know, instead of changing staff every couple of years, you know, it was, you know, you're going to be here. And, you know, I think my resume speaks for itself that, you know, if I get to a spot, I want to make sure that it's, you know, it's being run properly. And, and, you know, hopefully I'm here for a long time. 
You know, that's that's the goal. That was the goal when I was hired, and that's the goal still today. So that's awesome, Coach. I mean, just uh, looking at your resume, you're seeing not only are you successful where you're at, you were there for 17 years, and that has to reassure an AD that they got somebody that they don't have to worry about you job hunting, going all over the place, and you're building that program at Colts Neck up really quickly first year is really tough to break in and get your type of philosophy in but the last two years you really have it rolling right now wouldn't you say that yeah i, I would say after the, the first year was you know trying to implement our our offense our defense our special teams you know discipline uh just how you carry yourself around around the school uh or on the field or in the, in, in the community mm -hmm. you know and that, that was important and you know when we came back after you know the year one uh, we started year two in 2018, and you could tell right away the guys were much more comfortable. They were moving much faster, you know, and it played out over that course of that year when we won eight games. Uh, and then this past year, you know, everything everything was messed up with COVID. And, you know, there's a, there a lot of changes being made, and, you know, we, we made sure that we tried to adjust as much as possible, not only the, the kids but the staff. You know, we had to – change everything that we did and how our practices were run and we're limited to two hours and you know and then we win seven games and you know it, it, it's great seeing the guys progress you know getting in the weight room that that was the most important thing getting in you know after that first year because i got hired and then you know we weren't in in the weight room until march so you know the, the next year is when we started seeing everything because the guys were in there since december yeah and going along and you know they had months instead of a couple of weeks to, to prepare and then, you know, after last year, COVID hits and, you know, the guys realize that weight room is important and they have to get in the weight room. And, you know, what they were doing was they were going over different people's houses, you know, just just to, to lift, to lift together. So they're all together. So they didn't have to go into just one, you know, workout world, a planet fitness or one of those. Um, they were able to get together and do different things. And that was huge. And that's going to be huge this year as well. You know, making sure that, that we hit the ground running. Because you know we we <laughs> we have a very tough schedule. So. Yeah, we're going to talk yeah. more about that later on. We'll but that's pretty that. that's pretty impressive uh, segment with you with the process. A very hardworking, loyal, <laughs> successful coach uh, got you to where you. All right, coach. Now we're going to talk COVID, and I'm I'm first. I'm going to take this mask off. I'm sick of wearing it, even though I look better with a mask on. Um, as a football coach, we had to be very flexible during the tough time to the COVID. We all know what the negative stuff is and the bad things we keep hearing. Give me something positive that the Colts Neck football program took out of last season's COVID season. Honestly, if I can describe it in one word, it would be sacrifice. You know, these these guys, the coaches, the, the players, the parents, they all sacrificed a lot over the year. You know, not going to family barbecues, not having barbecues or parties, you know, not having the parties that they normally would have during mm -hmm. the summer and then going into the fall, uh, not having a school year, you know, a, a normal school year where, where Colts Neck was was virtual for a couple of weeks mm -hmm. at the start and then you can opt in and everything. But losing all that stuff. And But but the main thing is sacrificing for the betterment of the team, um, for, the, for the guy next to him because they realize that if they messed up, they got COVID, you know, or were exposed. And yeah. the next person's exposed and the next person's exposed. And, you know, then it's that, that snowball rolling downhill. And uh, they made sure our guys made sure that, that we didn't have those situations. And, you know, knock on wood, we were able to, to, to not shut down. We didn't have to shut down at all last year. So, you know, that that was good timing and, and you know, good luck, but also the sacrifice of, of these guys and realizing that, you know, there's something bigger than them that they're playing for. And it's, you know, their buddies and their classmates. That was the main thing that we – I think we took that of it. I was pleasantly surprised as a fellow head football coach in Ocean County that not only my program was taking it serious, but so was others. And yeah. you never knew what we what to expect with these kids, with these masks and social distancing and this and that. But collectively, whatever we did, we did it right to make sure that we got a football season with that. But you're right. That is awesome. Coach Sacrifice was huge in the Colts Neck football program last season. Okay, Coach, now I want you to talk about your 2021 Colts Neck high school football schedule on the left. And on the right side is that new, newly formed division, the American division, where that committee put together a bunch of competitive teams in one spot. So, Coach, you got the floor. Talk about your divisions. 
All right. Well, we start with Tom's River North and, you know, a storied program down there. They're always successful, always rebuilding. Uh, it, it's a tough first game for us um, to go down to Tom's River North on a Friday night. Um, but, you know, that's that's what we want to do. We want to, you know, we want to challenge ourselves against the best teams. And, and we got that in our division and added division as well. You know, we go go to Matawan with an added division game. Um, they have a, a quarterback back and a beast of a running back back. So, you know, they're going to be a challenge as it is. Uh, then we move on to, to Donovan Catholic. And they just, they just you know, rebuild every year. You know, if they lose a couple of guys, they got guys that are in the younger stages that are coming up to uh, to fill those spots. So, that, you know, another challenging game. Uh, and then we have Wall, you know, the top team in the state last year uh, and obviously the short conference. So, mm-hmm. And they have a lot of guys back, you know, on both sides of the ball. So, you know, another challenge. Then we have Rumson. Um, who's perennial, perennially uh, a very good team, you know, always fighting for a champion, the state championship. Uh, and then we finish up with our out of division schedule with Lacey, who's going to be a very good team as well this year. They got a lot of guys get back, including, you know, another beast of a running back down there. So, you know, and then we, then we have the pods. So, you know, we have our, our work cut out for us. And, you know, that's, that's what we've been trying to do this whole summer is prepare ourselves to play a schedule like that. Um, and that's what we want. That's, you know, that's why we we play this game is is to be the best, you mm-hmm. know. And, and this year it's going to show us how, how how far we've come over the last couple of years. Mm-hmm. That's a tough schedule right now. Looking at it, very competitive games. But I, I guess coming into uh, your job at Colts Neck, you wanted to eventually play games like that, meaningful games yeah. like Absolutely. that. Absolutely, yeah. Absolutely, that that was the goal from day one, and you know we're here now, so we we have to we have to perform. Yeah, and the way they're picking the schedules now and the division is it's by the your your three year span of football and your numbers and that takes us to the division, the American division that was just put together. And coach, just looking at that quickly, oh my God, that that is there's no breathers. I mean, and you're one of those teams too, where other teams in your division are talking about you, Colts Neck, you got Donovan Catholic, Rumson, Tom Driven North Wall, all teams that are perennial football powers. Year in and year out. All right. Now, Coach, this part right here is what makes us head football coaches look very, very good. It's your assistant football coaches. Your your 2021 Colts Neck football coaching staff. Please let me hear a couple of these, all these names of these guys that got your program going in the right direction. Right. So so first we have our defense coordinator, and he's going to be doing receivers and knee backs. It's Matt Norman. Uh, it's his first year on the staff. Uh, he comes over from from Howell via RBR. He was a Barnegat guy. Yeah, he he was he was. Yeah. So uh, good hire. So he he came highly recommended. Yeah. Highly recommended. Um, so we're excited to have him on board, Coach awesome. Coach Norman. Uh, then Coach Don Polifron. Uh, he coached with me at RBC for a couple of years. Um, he's going to be our special teams coordinator, and he's also doing the offensive line and defensive line. Uh, he's a very good tec- technician and tactician as well. So, you know, it's good to have Dom again. He's, it's his second year at, at Colts Neck with us. Uh, then we have Ryan Byrne. Uh, Ryan Byrne's going to be doing quarterbacks, linebackers. Uh, he actually played for me at RBC. Uh, and then when I got hired at Colts Neck, he, he was the first guy to reach out to ask to come on staff. And uh, and he's been a great hire, Ryan Byrne. Uh, and then Dylan Hronisic, another guy that, that played for me at RBC. Um, he's playing run, he's coaching running backs and linebackers. Uh, and Doug Zokel. Another ex-RBC player, mm-hmm. he's going to be doing tight ends and DNs. Uh, then we have Pete Ficarelli, who comes to us uh, from New York City, actually. He, he was coaching New York City for 25 years as, as a coordinator up there. Mm-hmm. I moved down to, to right down the street, and, you know, we brought him on board. He's another guy that kind of came highly recommended to us. Uh, Mike Campbell. Mike Campbell was a quarterback at Colts Neck before my time, and then he went on to college and, and started his professional life and really wanted to get in coaching. So he's, he's going to help us out this year as quarterbacks and D-backs. Uh, and then Brendan Way, he's doing wide receivers, D-backs, another Colts Neck grad. He was actually part of my first class uh, that, that we had here at Colts Neck, and he wanted to come back and get in, involved. Uh, then we go, then we turn to the freshman. We have Sam Turner, who's been coaching for yeah. 44 years, I believe. Oh, yeah. he said. Uh, he'll be our head freshman coach this year. Mm-hmm. Uh, then Joe Conahan, who was also a Colts Neck graduate and has been coaching here for, for a few years and started with us as well. Um, and then Chris Rossi, who's uh, it's his first year on staff. Uh, he's coming in, uh, another highly recommended guy, you know, that, that could really speak to the, to the kids and everything, and he'll be doing freshmen as, as well. And, you know, then 
that that's our coaching staff. So, and then obviously Jim Portella, uh, he was a defense coordinator the last couple of years. He'll be staying on as, as a volunteer and, and coming, you know, at the days he can, uh, mm -hmm. he, he got a promotion at work. So, Good for him. you know, he's, he's, uh, yeah, he's doing what he can. He'll be behind the scenes and at games and everything like that. So it's always great to have, you know, a guy that's so successful and, you know, he's a mentor to me, you know, and, and it's great to have him around as much as possible. Coach, I love talking to you coaches off the air about your assistance and just hearing the passion and excitement that you guys are talking about your guy, your player, your coaches, because they're the guys who run the program. If you think about it, there's more of them and only one of you guys as head coaches. But right. That staff is a very, very um, exciting staff. I know Matt Norman. I know him. Um, you know, he was with us one year and then he went to um, – um, I know he was at Howell last year, um, you know, just an up and coming oh, guy, yeah. student of the game. He, when he told me he was going to Colts neck, that was, I mean, he was so excited to be going there to, for the opportunity and all that. So you're going to have a guy who's going to relate real well to the kids and get a lot out of them right there. Right. Coach, Coach Portella, we all know um, that's great. So when you came over to Colts neck, I'm sure there's so many different people that were a, a uh, you know, getting your attention to, of coaching, but you know, as well as I do, you want the right people on the staff, not Absolutely. just, you just don't take anybody. And, right. and that's a pretty impressive staff. All right. Now coach 2021, let's talk Colts neck Cougars football. But before you talk about those players, just tell us what you guys run offensively, defensively, and then you can start talking about all those key players that you coming back that the short conference has been talking about. Go ahead, coach. All right. So offensively, we're, we're basically a pro I team. Uh, we do, you know, go some, do some spread stuff um, and try to keep people off their toes or on their toes, excuse me. And, <laughs> uh, and defensively, we're a 43 team base team. Mm -hmm. uh, but with all the different types of defenses, you, you know, you're, you're going to be switching defenses around yeah. and going against a spread team one week and a power team the next week and an option team. So, you know, that they, they change weekly a lot of times, uh, whether it be offensively or defensively. But we're trying to keep people on their toes with everything that we do, special teams wise as well. Mm -hmm. Now, coach. What are some of the key players that you got? And again, I keep hearing it. I've done research on who you guys got. And everybody keeps telling me about your key players that you're coming back off a seven and one team. So you got to be excited about the off season leading up to this season right now for your program. Right. I mean, the main thing that, that we're doing right now and making sure that these guys don't get complacent. All right. Don't think that they've done anything important we haven't won a state title and that's that's the biggest thing we talked about it last night at, at our practice mm -hmm. that you know that that we need we need to still be hungry um that we can't get complacent and think that we've done something just because we've played before played a couple of games that people are just going to roll over for us and then obviously you look at our schedule and that's not even close to the case no so so we, we need to be prepared for that you know it always it always starts with every team you know it starts with your quarterback position and tommy found a good one um, he, he's one of my favorite players, you know, that I've ever coached, but he also does it all for us. You know, he's going to, he's going to call the offense out there. He's going to mm -hmm. get us in our checks, you know, run our R RPOs correctly. Um, and he's basically a four year starter. He came in as a freshman first couple of games. He didn't start then our quarterback that year. He, he hurt his shoulder. So you can't be a quarterback with an injured shoulder. So he had to come up, play quarterback. So he played the rest of the year, started the rest of the year, a quarterback. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he was there as a sophomore and as a junior. So, you know, you could technically say he's a four-year starter for us. Um, so he's very, very key to, to what we're doing offensively. Mm -hmm. He also plays safety for us and is our punter, too. You know, he's, he's been an all-short punter. So, you know, he's, he's got that going for him. Oh, yeah. He's got a, he's got a boot for, for a leg. So, um, And then we have Johnny Manos, another three-year starter. Uh, he, started, he played a little bit at running back last year, but he started linebacker for this be his third year starting linebacker. Um, so he's another key contributor. He had over 100 yards against Southern last year. Again, I mentioned it before mm -hmm. when, when Barsky injured his shoulder. Uh, and then Anthony Bonanno uh, at, at linebacker. He's our Mike backer. So he's getting us in all our checks on defense and making sure we're right there. Uh, he's He might play a little fullback this year. He played a little fullback last year as well. Mm -hmm. You know, he'll be playing there. Uh, John Runfalo, uh, he's a wide receiver D-back. It'll be a second year starting there. Mm -hmm. uh, he's, he's really grown and he's actually <laughs> – physically matured a lot over the last couple of months, you know, so I'm looking for him to have a big year. 
Uh, Cade Krebet, another two-year starter, uh, a receiver and D-back. Um, he's got very good hands, very good hands. Uh, Will Serdez, he's, he's an underclassman. He's a junior for us, and he started all year last year at, at a linebacker. But he also uh, played a lot at receiver, had a couple of balls caught, you know, and, and we expect him to take a bigger step offensively mm -hmm. this year. Uh, Matt Selly, he's a guy that, you know, he was in our plans last year as a sophomore, and he played the first game, and then he, he tore his ACL. So he was out for, you know, a number of months, and he's wow. still trying to rehab to get back. Um, he's a key guy. Colton Bardsley, uh, he'll be probably a tight end, DN for us this year. He played a lot last year, you know, at DN, D tackle for us. So he's a key contributor. And then, and then I get to the offensive line. Uh, Dan Volpe, you talked about Dan Volpe. Oh, uh, yeah. He's a three-year he, – he actually started a game as a freshman as well. But he, he's a three-year starter at tackle. Uh, played a little guard his sophomore year. Um, he's offensive tackle, defensive tackle. He's, mm -hmm. he's a kid, you know, who's, who's really been working hard this offseason. He's already gotten a couple of offers yeah. um, from, from Wagner and Central Connecticut State mm -hmm. as we speak. So, you know, that's a that's a good thing. Uh, Ryan Whalen, another big tackle. He started as a uh, sophomore at center for us. Uh, he's about 6'4", 285 as well. So, you know, he's a big boy, um, athletic kid who's who's still getting stronger and mm -hmm. still growing in body. Uh, Matt Chinucci, another three-year starter on, on the offensive line. Uh, he's a very good wrestler as well. So that translates into, into football, mm -hmm. especially the offensive line. So he's been starting three years, like I said. Uh, Jack Machu is, is a guy that's coming in as, as a center this year who really worked hard in the offseason. You know, he's going to be a senior, and he said, I want to play this year. You know, instead of standing off and doing scout team stuff, I want to play. Mm -hmm. uh, and then Christian Monteforte is, is our kicker. Uh, he's been a three-year starter for us as well, and he pr progressively gets better uh, every year. So we're expecting a big year out of him um, this year. Wow. That's uh, – Coach, you got to feel pretty good coming – you know, out of the 2020 season, having those key returning players back, not just returners, they're kind of very uh, old division type of caliber type of players too. And you right. love to play smack mouth football. Whew. Your practices, yeah. your inside run drill must be pretty intense. It is. It is. It, it, it could be. It could be. We got we got to calm them down a couple of times. Yeah. You, know, you have the sophomores over on the on the uh, scout team, and mm -hmm. got to make sure they're. They make it to the next day. You got a bunch yeah. of those players that that were doing the the what what I call is the college tour for camps. You know right. they're they're being exposed to that stuff, and I'm I'm hearing it from word of mouth from college coaches or other high school coaches. You know of, of those players from your school, very very, very uh, um, you know that you guys are and and in your conference your division, you know that you, you need these players to compete. You really do. So. Yeah. Um, Going into your fourth year, do you feel more comfortable than you did your first year? Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, everybody knows they're more comfortable in their own skin. They know what they're doing. Uh, and the guys, you know, especially having guys, you know, that have been around the program for three years, mm -hmm. you know, four years that they, they understand how we do things, you know, the expectations that we have as coaches, you know, of them and they'll have as of themselves. And, you know, last night was a great example of, you know, guys, seniors really taking a leadership role and, you know, talking to the sophomores and telling them this isn't good enough. we got to get better at this. And, you know, we, we have a big sophomore class and a very good, very talented sophomore class. Um, but, again, they're sophomores and they're playing, you know, they're going to play a varsity schedule. Right. You know, they they got to they gotta mature very quickly, well, you know, because it's, yep. it's important. I that. love the fact that your, your banquet, you're going to be able to see kids that, uh, under your tutelage, you know, for four years, they didn't have a head coach different years. It's, it's special. That's a program to me, right, a program right. builder and all that. And seeing guys like this, when you came into the program, you probably didn't even know half these kids were around. No. That's awesome. No. So no. hopefully you have more of these type of kids coming around the next four to eight years too, right? Younger brothers, their neighbors or whatever. But these guys are good guys where these younger kids can look at and mirror them like role models. Um, and what you got. And that's awesome. Coach, you got a great thing going here. Uh, I really appreciate you coming on our show, the Shore Football Report. Um, I was telling you earlier, I'm a dot com guy right now. The Shore Football Report dot com is on your video and every head football coach's video will be on there where you can click on it. We're keeping track of the top 20 social media hits on each program. So once we put this up late tonight, 
We're going to see where Colts Neck is in that top 20 social media. I know you're going to be in the top 20, top 10 on the field, but you got to do it in social media. You are what you are. I always tell the kids, be a winner on and off the field and also in social media on a good thing. So, Coach, thank you. Um, this was Colts Neck's head football coach, Matt, a uh, Matt Ahern, uh, speaking to us here and giving us his time on a very busy schedule leading up to the season coach. Thank you. Thanks. I appreciate everything you're doing coach. It's, it's great that you're doing it and we really appreciate it as coaches and, and the players too. Yep. Thank you very much coach.